looking for the training and skills you need to get a new career? Call Center for Training and Careers today. That's CTC at 408-213-0961 and start building your new career today. Wapili Rose Amador Lebeau and this is Native Voice TV. Well as you could tell we're not in the studio we're on location at the sacred Mount Amanam. So we have the wind in our hair we have dirt in our teeth and we'll be uh, <laughs> having I guess our eyes will be watering but that's why we have the Hollywood look with the sunglasses today. <laughs> but anyhow it's beautiful up here and I'd like to welcome Val Lopez, and you are chairman of the... Amamutsin Tribal Band. Thank you for being here. And also Elias Castillo, who is a renowned writer and author and uh, award winner writer for the Mercury News a while back. Was, and you retired from there, and now you've, you've written a book. So welcome, Elias. Thank you, thank you. And uh, if we could start out with Val, tell us where we're at. It's just breathtaking out here and as you can tell it's windy and we went up higher and it was foggy so we couldn't tape up there but tell us where we're at yes today we're at Mount Amunum and Mount Amunum is what well, was the tallest peak in the Santa Cruz mountains and it was converted into a radar um, uh, station uh, during the Cold War and they shaved off some of the top so now it's the second highest mountain uh, in the Santa Cruz mountains Amanam in our language and in uh, about five other Ohlone languages uh, means hummingbird. And um, the humming, Mount Amanam is actually the, the mountaintop where our creation story uh, takes place. It was here that the creator um, brought bird, or, or, or made bird, uh, our, our bird brothers, uh, the four-legged and fish and plant life. And then he made... Uh, then he made man, and uh, he made man last, and gave us the responsibility to take care of all uh, of, of, of of the earth, and to take care of all of all living things, and that was our mission, and that remains our mission today, and is to take is, care of Mother Earth. It's beautiful. It's a preserve. Now, what is it? Now, right now? Mount Amunam is part of the Min Peninsula Open Space Trust. Um, once the, with the um, advent of uh, satellites they no longer needed the radar stations on the mountaintops and so uh, they um, gave the land to um, to uh, the for public use and mount um, and midpen is the holder of the land now oh, it is okay. a sacred mountain our people would climb to the mountaintops to be closer to the creator to pray to pray for healing to pray to give thanks Did to you pray still have for ceremonies the loved ones here we had a dance we had our first dance here in probably um, 150, 200 years, um, um, in January of 2013, of 2013, we had a we had our, a dance here, and we had Miwok join us as well um, in welcoming us back to Mount Amunam. Oh, wonderful! It's just so beautiful here, and I guess I guess they could hear the wind <laughs> yes. blowing around us, but it's it's just a gorgeous and we were place. Going, and we did try to go to the mountaintop to shoot this, but because of the wind and there was fog at the top, we came to this lower elevation. I was amazed at the change in wet, wet weather patterns from where we started at the bottom of the sun and it was still, and then the wind picked up, and then there was the fog, and trying to hang on to my hat here. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's breathtaking, but it's, it's very windy, and it's, it's, it's very comfortable up here. Yes. So that's Elias, you wrote a book, or you wrote a book that's coming out in January. Tell yes. us the name of the book, and a little bit about why you wrote it. Yeah, the uh, name of the book is A Cross of Thorns, The Enslavement of California's Indians by the Spanish Missions. And I wrote it to tell the truth. And by the way, tell the truth is going to be the motto of 
of the of a campaign that will be launched later on. We'll talk about that. Okay. Uh, to tell the truth about what happened in the missions, this uh, California has long believed the mission myth, which holds that the missions, all 21 of them, were these wonderful idyllic places where the Franciscan friars loved the Indians, the Indians loved them, and they just uh, got along famously. Well, there's not a shred of truth in it. In effect, the missions were death camps, and Junipero Serra and the friars were brutal towards the Indians. Um, half of the mission population of each mission uh, would die off every year. So each mission had about 1,000 to 1,200 Indians. Half of that population would die of disease, malnutrition, beatings, depression. Um, and they were trying, 10% of the Indians were always trying to run away. Um, because Junipero Serra was, his mind was twisted, um, close to being deranged. He, his policy, he had been sent to California to establish a Spanish presence in the state, in the territory. It was called Alta California. Um, and the king, through his viceroy in Mexico, had decided they needed to populate or to establish a Spanish presence in California. The way they decided to do that, before I get on a little bit, the reason was that Spanish or Russian hunters were doing a very successful uh, pelt hunting, doing very successful pelt hunting in Alaska. They were hunting seals and sea otters and they were moving down the coast. And the Spanish king's counselors advised, we don't do something soon, we're gonna lose Alta California. So the king ordered the immediate establishment of presidios and missions. And then what developed was that the Spanish inspector general by the name of Jose Galvez decided they didn't have money to do that really. And so he went to, decided, Let's use the Franciscans. They can establish missions and uh, we can educate the Indians. The Spanish king had said, what we can do is educate the Indians for 10 years and then release them. And then they, then they will be full Spanish subjects with all rights. No one will be able to argue because every single Indian will, have, will know how to speak, read and write and do arithmetic in Spanish. And so that was the, the plan, which, you know, seeing some, and the Franciscans would educate them. Sarah got up here and decided, no, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to baptize them and then I'm going to make them stay in the missions for the rest of their lives. They're basically slaves. Slaves, that's right. He, was, he enslaved them. Right. So there is no church dogma. There is no church dogma at all that calls for if you're baptized in Catholicism, you cannot be a slave. And that's what he did. For the rest of their lives, not only the original Indians, but their children and the children's children. And of course, attempts, the Indians were always trying to escape. And if they were brought back, they would be whipped, lashed, they would be, be beaten daily. Uh, for that was in building the missions, right? Because, you know, it's so glorified, glamorized oh, there was in, no, yeah, in schools. Yeah. Oh, sure. Everybody gets to build their yeah. mission and yeah. it's beautiful and we make the little Indians walking around here and everybody's walking around. They're cute the little missions. Industry. It's a, they industry. shouldn't. I mean, that's to it's me. A it's, it, it's, right. a it's a lie. Right. It's a lie. And I think what you are doing and what you are saying is something that should be taught in the schools. Absolutely, and both Val and I, we teamed up on this to, to uh, get this message out. And mm -hmm. I think we're gonna be able to do it once the book comes out. Now uh, Val, you were mentioning that the statues, that we need to get those statues <clears throat> off the freeways and everywhere. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, well that's true. Well, let me start with the, the campaign. On, on January 28th, we're gonna kick off a Tell the Truth campaign. We're going to have uh, on the steps of the, of, the, of the west side of the state capitol in Sacramento, we're inviting uh, native people and, and non-native people to join us to support the campaign of Tell the Truth. We want the truth told of the missions. We don't want them said that they are lovely 
wonderful places. They treated us like children, and it was a, a loving, caring environment when it wasn't. It was absolutely brutal. We want the truth told. Uh, and then the other things we're gonna be asking for, um, as you said about regarding the statues, right now, sta uh, uh, um, Unipro Serra is a very revered figure uh, in a lot of California history. And he's seen as a, uh, as a founding father and with, with love and compassion. And he had none of that. To our people, to, the, to our tribe, and I can only speak for our tribe, I can't speak for any other tribe, but to our tribe, um, Unipro Serra uh, equates to uh, Adolf Hitler. And, you know, I mean, how many statues do you see that give honor and glory to Adolf Hitler? The okay. answer is probably zero. And, and it should be the same way for Unipro Serra. And we're going to be asking that all the, the statues of Unipro Serra in public places um, uh, be taken down, be removed. We're also going to ask that there be an investigation of the school system to see why they perpetuated the lie of how loving and wonderful the missions were for all these years. My father, my grandfather, perhaps my great-grandfather, you know, in schools and stuff like that, they learned about the mission systems and stuff. And, and you know, thousands and thousands of kids, hundreds of thousands of kids today go there to visit the mission, and they're told that, that it's a loving, caring place. That's one of the things I remember as a kid when my dad would take us to the missions, he would take us around the back and say, See, that's where the mass grave is of all the Indians. Yep. They just threw them in mass right. and graves. And in some missions... And they were killed well, building yeah. these places. And in some missions, but I will tell you that they've paved over mm -hmm. those. Mm -hmm. And my question is, are they hiding this so that no one will ever know how many of the Indians died? Well, if you go to San Juan Batista, that's true. You'll see 3,000 plus natives. Or, or, it doesn't say natives. It says people were buried in the graveyard right behind the church in San Juan Batista. I remember but a that. couple of interesting things here is that only Indians that were baptized could be buried in the Catholic Church. The ones that were not baptized could not be buried there and they were buried, where, and, and where were they buried? Just elsewhere. The other thing is, is during mission times, um, there's records showing that 19,421 Indians died at San Juan Batista. 19,421, you know. And, and so they're, you know, whenever yeah. they do any digging at all at San Batista, they always find remains. Yeah, it, it's, We're, it's, let me say one other sure, thing. Sure, go ahead. We're very thankful to Elias for the research that he did. We needed this book to come out, A Cross of Thorns. Um, growing up as a child and, uh, and, and throughout all my years of life, we all hear stories. You know, we hear stories how, how mothers would put their would cut their hands and put it over newborns to kill them to kill the baby to suffocate the baby so the baby would not be brought up in the mission system we heard of just a tremendous amount of rape uh that would that were occurring at the missions a, a good example of that is at um monterey as you know there's a mission monterey but there's also a mission san carlos and they're just miles apart and you say wait how did that happen why do they have the, the two missions so close together well, the reason is, is that the Mission Monterey was built right across the street from the Presidio, and the soldiers were going in and just raping the women. And so they moved the mission. They had to move the mission to keep that from you know, happening at that frequency. So we heard, all these, we heard a lot of stories growing up, but whenever we would talk about it, no one would believe us. And that's why we are grateful today for Elias's book. It's well-documented, well-footnoted. And, um, and I had the privilege of reading it. And, um, I re I re after reading it, I realized how important it was that it, it's time to tell the truth. That's, yeah. what, we're, you know, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, the, uh, California history needs to be changed. And that's the yes. goal that Val and I have set for ourselves. And anyone that, uh, and for the uh, already people that are beginning to become aware of what we're trying to do. And um, the book is the evidence uh, of what happened here. People will, will know after reading the book that the Governor Neve wanted to break the mission's stronghold on the economy. And what he did, he ordered San Jose founded. And he said, don't found it near the mission. Get it away as far as you can because I want San Jose to supply San Francisco and Santa and the Pueblo, the Santa Clara, and the Presidios in, in that area. 
and he did within five years but the missions were these huge let me give you an example each mission had about 25,000 head of livestock each mission San Juan let's see it was Mission San Juan Luis in Southern California had a herd of livestock 35,000 head they probably had about 20,000 head of cattle 10,000 horses um, wow. 2,000 mules uh, 5,000 sheep these were huge and what they did eventually when the merchant men got realized geez if you go to California you can get a lot of hides a lot of tallow which is the only lubricant at that time lubricant and horns for the backs of combs to make combs you know, uh, mirrors and so forth and so every year these merchant uh, from New England merchant men and from England would stop and the friars would sell them the hides the tallow and the horns the wine that they in one mission they were making about uh, two five hundred barrels and some two thousand barrels of wine every year and they would sell them brandy well these friars were not they weren't fries anymore they yeah. were tycoons and they mm -hmm. were getting very very rich they had free labor and they had the best land in California yeah. and anyone dared challenge the settlers would come and say well <laughs> gee the the governor said well if you go over there and that area over there you can take some of the land the minute that settler would go there the fry would rush over on horseback and no 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 this is church land you can't build here and, uh, and then the question is why didn't the governors just they were in charge why didn't they just say all right that's it you know you're you're monopolizing the economy you're ruining the life of the settlers because they cannot compete against you the power of the church is they could not buck the power of the church and remember also that the Inquisition was still in force it was still existing surviving and if they went against the missions and Father Sarah and all of them they would then be going against the Catholic Church and they could then say the governor is going against the church he's he's not allowing us to do God's work um, perhaps the Inquisition should look into him and Sarah was a member of the Inquisition. He was an official of the Inquisition in Mexico. Whether he was still in California, I don't know. But he had connections to the Inquisition. The governors couldn't do anything. They just had to sit there and you know, watch the economy of California being totally controlled by the Franciscans. And so they would take the money and I've, I found one, one in description by a, a, a sea captain who was there to trade. And they're in the office and the, uh, uh, he hands them over gold coins, all in gold, bundled up for what he's bought. And the friars go, oh, no, 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 according to the description. Oh, no, no, we can't, we're Franciscans. We cannot touch the gold, but we'll have our foreman come in and count it. And and then the merchant leaves and he starts talking to the foreman going out. He says, is that true? They can't touch it? He says, no, no. What they do, you put it in their bedroom and the minute you're gone, they'll go in there and count it <laughs> out. Count it, make sure it's right. <laughs> yeah, make sure it's right. And when the Mexican government ordered all of the Spaniards out of Mexico and out of California, there's a story of, I think it was Santa Barbara Mission, Father Ripoll is pays for a trip on one of the New England mer merchant ships and he goes up and he's hobbling really just you know he's old and he's got this big cloak the minute the ship drops anchor and they're sailing he turns to the captain look what I got and he opens up his coat and there's gold he's got little uh, pockets filled with gold that's why I couldn't could, walk. That's why I couldn't walk. Mm -hmm. And he had little pockets sewed all over, which he had one of the, uh, had had obviously one of the Indians, so, so he could put all the gold coins in there. And where those friars went, no one knows. There's no record of where they went. Supposedly some went to the Philippines, oh some went back east, some went, they couldn't go back to Mexico because they weren't being allowed So there. when is the, the book is out in January and the name again? Uh, a Cross of Thorns. And how many pages is it? Uh, about 346. Is uh, it, they're it, putting it together right now. So it's going to be about, 
I would say between 348, 343, you, something like that. Are you going to be able to get it electronically? From oh, yes. So oh, yes. It's already on, for pre-order status, it's on Amazon, it's on Barnes & Noble, it's on Powell's Bookstore in Portland, Oregon, and then uh, also there is a site on the publisher's web, uh, website. It's, if you go to um, Quill Driver Books or Craven Street Books, it's already up. Quill Drivers, right now it's on Quill Driver Books. Okay. And uh, so you can pre order on Amazon pre -order. and so forth. Pre order on Amazon. Everybody right. has to get this book. You have to learn the truth. And it's definitely something we need in our schools. Absolutely. I mean, we Absolutely. have to stop teaching the, these lies. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. 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 Yeah, it, it's, it's necessary. Uh, California is probably, can we say probably is the only state where the real truth of the Indians has not been told of what happened to No, them. there's a lot of other tribes whose, whose stories have been have not been told or who have been lost, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, California, you know, yeah, the, for sure the, the truth in California has never been told. And, um, mm -hmm. and not just the missions, as I, I say that again, not just the missions. I mean, all tribes in California you know, they um, they had their own histories, and, yes, and all of them yes. are sad. And uh, they all, you know, we lost we lost all the land, for example. You know, and our purpose for putting here was to take care of Mother Earth, take care of the land. And with the loss of land, how do you how can you fulfill your obligation to Mother Earth? So talk, talk about talk, talk about the, the scalping that took place in the 1850s, uh, and where the, the the children, Indian children, were kidnapped. Oh. What um, Elias is mentioning is an issue that um, in 1851, Governor Peter Burnett signed an executive order to exterminate all Indians in California. And under that order, they were paid bounties of 25 cents to five to five dollars um, for every dead Indian. And many times they would turn in a scalp as evidence of a killed Indian to collect the reward. Or, or a skull, a head. The state, the, the, the California paid over one and a half million dollars uh, <laughs> on the extermination of Indians. That included a lot of expeditions to go out, seek and, and kill Indians. Now, something that I found out just within the last week is the, uh, uh, is the very first bond or one of the very first bonds ever issued by the state of California was for the purpose of exterminating Indians. To pay for that uh, executive order to exterminate Indians, they sold the bond to get the money to pay the rewards. Yeah. And, and, and you know, and then that, that's, that's, that's not told anywhere. You don't see that anywhere. And isn't there a school but in yet, San Jose called Peter Burnett? There, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> there is a school in Peter Burnett. And there's That's also shocking. a school in Morgan, there was I didn't know that. a school in Morgan Hill called Peter Burnett. We went before the school district just this year and we asked that they change the name. And the school district changed the name of that school. It is no longer Peter well, I think Burnett. We need to work on that the San Jose one. <laughs> we need to work on San Jose. There's also about a dozen other schools in California um, na uh, named after Peter, Governor Peter Burnett. Oh my yeah. God. And the money also went to form the militia, a state militia that went out to hunt the Indians and kill them. And uh, it, it was a horrendous act by the, uh, by California, by the California government. Finally, it was stopped. Uh, it was federal, the federal agent, uh, federal Indian agent, said this has got to stop. You can't yeah. keep doing this. Yes, and, and uh, yeah. you know, and then a couple other things um, that, that um, Elias referred to was um, indentured servitude. Oh, yeah. Indentured servitude is slavery, and uh, they had passed laws of indentured servitude in 1858, and Indians, it's documented that Indians were indentured into the 1930s. We had slavery here in California of, of, of Indians less than 100 years ago. Then they passed laws uh, to legalize kidnapping, particularly of children. They would kidnap the children and sell them. And the going rate for an Indian child was $150. And uh, a lot of times the children, um, the, 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 the state thought they were selling them to take the Indian out of them, but a lot of times they were sold for exploitation, and not just for work, but a lot of times for other purposes yeah. as well. Yeah. They had auction blocks in the Gold Coast area where they would bring the children, put them on a block, 
and, and then auction them off. Um, and uh, it, it was a hard situation because first the mission started this by taking the land away from the Indians. So, so when they came out, there was nowhere for them to go. You know, they wanted That's to right. go. That's there right. was absolutely no place to go. Their culture had been really eroded. And then along comes the Mexican government, which treats them just as badly, even right. though they're free. And then the gold rush. And it just gets worse and worse for the California Indians, especially on in the coastal areas. It, it was, it's a, well, it's this a is horrific, a book that everyone tragic, needs to read when it comes out in story. January. And there's going to be a rally. And tell me again about the rally. Yes, it's going to be on January 28th. We're asking for people to meet on the west side steps of the Capitol. And um, it's going to be tell the truth. We're, you know, we're going to have a number of, we're going to have a dance uh, prior to the speakers coming on. And then uh, we're going to talk, kick off the tell the truth campaign. Um, Assembly member Luis Alejo will be there with us. And we're asking for, uh, we'll have other, um, uh, other people, uh, speakers who we're talking to now, trying to get confirmed. And um, we're hoping to have a great turnout and to uh, put pressure on the state of California to recognize that it's time to tell the truth. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's way overdue. Thank you for Thank writing you. the book. And we have to get the word out there. And I do hope our audience shows up on those Capitol steps. I hope everybody buys a copy of this book because it's so important that we educate ourselves to our own history here in California. You know, because for so many years, these lies have been told and Absolutely. continue to be told. It's shameful. It's shameful and disgraceful. It is. It is. I want to thank you both for bringing us up here to this beautiful, beautiful sacred mountain. I guess the wind's telling us to leave because it's blowing us away. So we'll see you next week, Native Voice TV. Good night.